Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to finish our two-player tank combat game. We're going to add shooting and score to our game. Let's get started. So, first we're going to allow our players to shoot. So let's add some bullets. We're going to go to Media Library. Um, and if you go to Space, and then choose Sci-Fi, um, scroll down and we're going to add a blue ball and we're also going to add a green ball so add both of those to your game just like that now let's work on the code for each of these so the first thing we're going to do is drag in a non-start and we're going to uh, take a block called set rotation style and we're going to set it to don't rotate we're also going to hide the bullet on start uh, we only want the bullet to be seen when um, when a player is shooting Then in physics, we're going to uh, set active to false. We don't want um, the bullet to interact with, with any of our objects, and you'll see why that is in a moment. Um, and we're going to set the shape of the bullet to circular. Okay. Um, let's also copy this to the, the green ball. So we'll highlight the entire block of code Control C, copy, go to the green ball, and Control V, oops, uh, click in the code area, Control V, paste that in, and you should see the same code in the green ball as well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is create a few variables to keep track of different things such as reload times and score. So let's head on over to variables and create a variable um, I'm going to call it blue reload and I want it to be for all actors and we want the variable to reset on stop um, we're going to have the reset value be 1 um, and this is just going to mean that when the game starts um, blue the, the blue tank um, has their bullet available to shoot. So let's create that variable and do the same thing for green. All actors reset on stop one. Okay, and let's add add score as well. Um, two, score. Let all actors access the variable. Um, we want to reset to zero on stop because when the game starts we want both players to begin at zero again. So now that we have our variables, let's let's use them to keep track of the reload and the score. Let's go to blue tank um, and we're going to go to events and drag in when up arrow pressed and we're going to change up arrow to let's see we'll change it to F that means when the F arrow or when the F key is pressed we're going to shoot the bullet so we're also going to go to control, drag in an if block, and then in, let's see, and then operators, we're going to drag in the equals expression. Um, and we want to check if the, the reload of the blue tank is equal to one. And if it is equal to one, then that means 
that the blue tank has a bullet ready and is available to fire. Um, if blue reload is equal to zero, um, then blue isn't ready to fire um, and this code won't be run. So when, when F is pressed, if the blue tank has a bullet available, we're going to broadcast in event, we're going to broadcast a message. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to tell all of the other actors in the game that something is going to happen. Um, and that that event is going to be called uh, shoot blue. Um, that means that we're going to tell all of the, the other actors in the game um, the message of shoot blue when the F key is pressed. Um, if that doesn't make sense to you, hopefully it will in a minute when we when we go over um, what what this message is going to do. Um, if not, just just stay with me. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to to go to the blue ball and we're going to drag in when I receive and we're going to select shoot blue. This means that the code is going to run when the actor receives the message uh, shoot blue, which means that this code will run when the F key is pressed um, and the blue tank has a bullet to shoot. Okay, so this is going to be the code for the actual shooting of the bullet. So. First, we're going to have the actor um, go to the blue tank. The bullet is going to start at the blue tank and it's going to shoot outward. Um, we're also going to have it point, point in the direction. You can either find it manually or you can type it in. Uh, point in the direction of the blue tank. Uh, so for this, we're going to go to sensing, scroll down and actually grab the X position of mouse pointer block. Um, and in the drop down of X position, you can get the direction of the blue tank. So it's going to point in the same direction as the blue tank. We then want to show the bullet. So under looks, we're going to find the show block. We're going to show it, and then we're going to to have the, the bullet move. So under control, uh, drag in, repeat, and we're going to make this 300 times. We're going to have the bullet move under motion. We're going to have it move eight pixels. Um, and then we're going to put it off the screen. Uh, we're going to have it go to the next position of negative, and then you can just type in a one with a whole bunch of zeros. Um, and this will pretty much just move it off the screen. Um, it, it won't bother. It won't bother us on on screen. So when you play your game, you should see that when you press F, the bullet does move it's very very fast um, but you should see it shoot that's good okay so now we're going to allow the blue ball to interact with the different objects so we're going to go to events and we're going to drag in when false occurs and just follow me for this next bit and I'll explain at the very end. Um, go to operators um, and drag in an equals expression and then drag in a block that says substring of. And I'll explain what this does in a minute. Um, we're going to then go to Let's see, going to go to sensing and we're going to get the name of actor 
touched. Uh, we can actually just type it in, or actually it's right here. Um, when the substring of name of actor touched from, and just type these numbers in, 1 to 15 is equal to, and then type in space dot form first. So what this is going to do is it's going to send if the, the the blue ball, the bullet, is touching a space platform. And if you notice when you actually copy and pasted each of these um, each of these walls in, uh, they they named the wall for you and it says space platform one, two, three, three one, three one one. Yours might be a little bit different, but they're they're names aren't very aren't very cohesive um, it seems kind of randomly named uh, but if you notice each of them actually has space platform in the name so what this code does is it looks to see if it's touching an object that has space platform in the name and if it does then what we're going to do is we're going to hide the bullet so that when it hits a wall, then the bullet isn't shown anymore. So we're going to search go to again, and we're going to have it go to negative one with a whole bunch of zeros that can't bother us, um, and it'll be way off the screen. Okay, so now we also want to see if the bullet is touching the green tank. So we're going to get a block called um, when false occurs again and we're going to go to sensing and oh, we're going to get the block called touching mouse pointer and change that to green tank. So this code will run when the bullet hits the green tank. Okay, so what do we want to happen when the bullet hits the green tank? Well, we want to change the score. So we're going to go to variables and change uh, the blue score by one. Um, we're going to hide the bullet. Let's actually copy that. Control C, Control V. Um, we're going to set the blue reload. Uh, we set blue reload to zero. We don't want blue to shoot um, immediately again. And then we're going to actually do something called broadcast reset. Uh, I explained what broadcast does earlier. It tells all of the actors a certain message. Um, we're going to create a new message called reset. And that's going to reset the game, put everything back where it was originally, um, and start another round. So now what we're going to do is is we're going to drag in a, when I receive, and when I receive reset, we're going to have, only wanted to select that one, we're going to have a bullet go off the screen so it can't bother us again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to back to blue tank, um, and when I receive reset, when the game is resetting, uh, we're going to to have it go to its original position. Go to again, and that's its original position is going to be an x coordinate of negative five hundred and fifty, and a y coordinate of zero. That's going to put it about right here somewhere. Um, and it'll go there automatically, so we don't have to say move that there and move that up. It'll just do it automatically. So 
let's see, back to blue tank. We're going to have it point in direction. In direction. it is point in direction 90 degrees meaning it'll face towards the right we're going to later have the green tank face towards the left um, but the blue one is going to be facing right and we're going to set blue reload we just set uh, blue reload to one so that the blue tank can start shooting again. Okay. So now that we now that we have all of that, let's copy it over to the green the green tank and the green bullet. So let's copy that and paste it into into the green tank. But actually, the code is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have the green tank start on the right. So we're going to have it at an x-coordinate of 550 instead of negative 550. We're going to have it point in the opposite direction, so negative 90 degrees. And we're going to set green reload to 1 instead of blue reload. Okay, so now go back to the blue ball and let's see what we have here. Okay, so we have, let's, let's copy this section of code and put it in the green ball as well, um, except we're going to change it a little bit. When I receive shoot green, go to the green tank, point in the direction of the green tank, and that should all be the same. Um, let's actually create the, the shooting event, so back in in the blue tank, let's copy, let's see where, where did it go? Oh, this one F pressed. We're gonna copy that and we're going to paste it into the green tank. V. And let's have the shoot key for, for the green tank be L. And we're going to have it broadcast shoot green instead of shoot blue. Um, also, we want to check if, if the green reload is equal to 1, not if the blue re reload is equal to 1. Um, and that should be it for that segment. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. Uh, actually, let's go back to the green ball. Um, there's still a little bit more I think we need to, to copy over. Uh, let's copy this over. Actually, this shouldn't need any changes. Um, we want both bullets to hide or to go off the screen um, when they hit a wall, so that shouldn't need any changes. Um, and we're going to copy this over as well. Uh, the reset should be the same for both, both bullets. And we're going to finally copy this last block of code over. In, and this will need a little bit of changes here um, because it's the green bullet when it's touching the blue tank then we're going to change green score by one um, we're going to set green reload to zero and we're going to broadcast reset still so I think that should be it for copying things over um, one thing that we do need to do is we need to go to settings um, and let's see, we need to actually in, in on start, we can set the size object. We don't want it to be a huge ball like we saw earlier. Um, why don't we set it to 20% and then we can do the same thing to the blue on start set the bullet to 20% so let's play our game and as you can see the tanks move nicely 
Um, when you press F, you should see the ball go and shooting out from the blue tank. We can actually make the size a little smaller, um, maybe 15 for both. And when you shoot, there you go. Um, green should work as well with the with the key L. But if you notice the the reload isn't working, and that's because uh, we haven't we haven't worked on that yet. Uh, they're able to shoot as often as they want. So let's work on that now. Okay then. So back in stage, um, we're going to go to events and drag in when I receive, and we're actually going to do two of them. Um, when I receive, shoot blue, and when I receive, shoot green. Um, we're going to set blue reload to zero, and we're going to set green reload to zero for under shoot green. Um, then we're going to have it wait, let's see, Under control, wait, three seconds, wait three seconds, and then we're going to set the reload back to one. And what this is going to do is it's going to to disallow the tanks from shooting for three seconds, um, and then it will allow it to shoot again. Uh, so go ahead, try try that out. Um, you should see that you aren't able to shoot more than once every three seconds, and the same is true for the green tank. So that works well. Um, the next thing we're going to do is is reset. We're, we're actually going to add a reset to the beginning of the game. We're going to broadcast reset so that the tanks always start in the correct position. Um, and we're, we're only going to add one more thing to our game, and that's going to be showing the score at the end of each point. So when I receive reset and put this under stage, uh, when I receive reset, we're going to, and then just look up say, and here say hello for two seconds. We're going to add a few, add a few blocks here. Um, we're going to say blue score colon space, and then we're going to go to variables, and we're going to drag in blue score. Um, and then here we're going to actually start with a space, uh, maybe a few, and then green score, colon space, um, and then we're going to drag in green score. Oh, right here. And this means that every time that we send out the message reset, um, it'll tell us what the score is. So let's go ahead and try that. That works. Uh, we know that blue is at zero and green is at zero. And both can move. Okay. And then when, let's say, blue shoots green, blue score is now at one and green is at zero. So that works well. Let's try it the other way around. And there you go. Okay, so one final thing that you can do, this is optional, but if you want, you can add sound. Um, to do this, go to Control, drag in a forever block, and then go to Sound, and drag and place sound until done. And you can add um, a background music to your game. I'll just choose adventure theme. And when you restart your game, you should hear background music. So that's all. 
Uh, remember to save your game when you're done. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.